Today we're going to learn about turkey tail mushroom. This is a very common mushroom. It's probably growing near you and it's rather legendary in its medicinal abilities which are also being currently researched and there's a lot of validity it turns out behind those old legends. This is a real typical growth habit. You can see a rosette growth pattern up here and the layers of fungus over here, of fungi. <laughs> First let's learn to identify the turkey tail. I am going to be using information from a website that I just love. It's called mushroomexpert.com. Michael Kuhl really, really knows his stuff and makes it simple for anybody to understand mushrooms. So I'm going to use his totally true turkey tail test to see if this is really turkey tail. Number one, he asks us to look at the pore surface. Now, some other look-alikes have a different underside. You can see here we have maze-like gills. Really beautiful. Other fungi that look similar have, um, have long gills that are not maze-like. Here we have pores. And he asks, do you definitely have a pore structure? And here the answer is a resounding yes. Number two, we're looking at how many pores per millimeter. It's kind of a rough estimate, but he uses, do you have one to three, or do you have three to eight? Another way to think of it is, if you have one to three, it's going to be fairly large pores. Here you can see that we have a lot of pores per millimeter. We have really small pores that, if you step back, it's even difficult to see if it has a pore surface. But if you come up close, sure enough. Number three. Is the top surface velvety or hairy or fuzzy? And here you should be able to see that we have a really nice fuzzy hair on there. But note that there are other species that similarly have a very velvety soft top surface. Number four, he asks us to look at the cap coloration. Is it gray to whitish in color? And then you have a different species. Turkey tail, I usually see it in brown colorations. Though people have reported it, and I've seen photos actually, of colors as wild as, as bright blue. Um, I've heard of it in greens too. It will sometimes be sort of a, a reddish brown as well. Next, we're looking for, for starkly, in his words, starkly contrasting color zones. You can see really nice defined lines here, where some other fungi have more smooth delineations. Still contrasting color or lines, but definitely not as stark as you have here with the turkey tail. And finally, check and see if it's, if it's rigid and hard. Again, his wording. There's some of these shell fun fungi polypores that will feel almost like they're made of stone. The turkey tail is more like badly tanned leather. It's very, very flexible. And when we rip it apart, it even has a little bit of the way that leather rips apart in little fibers. If all of those six points check out, then you know that, thank you Michael, you have totally true turkey tail mushroom. Now, what is this stuff good for? This little fungus is a powerful medicine. It's 
my understanding that it's used in Japan right now in conjunction with uh, conventional cancer therapies to great results. Traditionally, it was considered an immune enhancer and a powerful antioxidant. And studies seem to be bearing that out. There's been a couple of clinical trials on, I've read one on breast cancer and one on colon cancer, where the NK, the natural killer cell count, really increases when these are used. So what that means is that after the radiation therapy, these boost one's immune system. Like anything else that's non-conventional medicine, you have to go on your own journey with this and, and decide, you know, what part conventional medicine is going to play in your life and what part alternative medicine is going to play in your life. Let me know about your experiences with turkey tail, if you have found it, if you have used it, and if so, how have you done it? Ex extract, tea, and have you noticed any effects? All right, thanks for watching.